over the past few weeks, and particularly over the past few days, I've been having some very interesting conversations and in comments of my videos and things like that um, about the state of African football. I've been having conversations where people keep repeating to me that, you know, Africa lacks the resources to do certain things. Um, Africa's coming around to doing those type of things. They're fighting through barriers. Um, we are inexperienced, for lack of a better term. We're inexperienced in trying to do the things that need to be done. And I, I can't help but having the same thing ring through my head. I, I think to myself, are we not giving them, are we not giving them too much leeway? Are we being too lenient on the Confederation of African Football and African football as a whole? Are we saying things like they need more time and all of that and actually hurting them in the long run? Guys, CAF for a history lesson. CAF is only three years younger than UEFA. UEFA, uh, uh, when, they, when they were brought into FIFA or the, the FIFA was created, UEFA was, was brought in in 1954. CAF was brought in in 1957. Which means that these are very old clubs. This is a 67-year-old organization. This is not an organization that was started in the, in the 90s. This is not an organization that uh, is, is, you know, newborn. Hasn't had time to figure out what they need to do. But yet when we speak about it, we speak on Kef as if man achashem. Achashem, how can we expect that from Kef? I've asked many tough questions. Here and on the show, my, my other show, there's many tough questions about our expectations of CAF, about how it works, that side, about what they're giving us, about the little things that they could be doing in order to make our football better. Now, I want to be frank, I want to be honest, and I want to be fair to them. I am not expecting CAF to come out and change border policies. I'm not expecting CAF to come out and end wars in some cases. But what I'm expecting CAF to do is to move more to the benefit of our football and move us forward. Be innovative. And I think my biggest point here is that a lot of the problems that CAF is facing is not problems of inexperience. It's not problems of resources. It's a problem in that we don't have a commitment towards the football of this continent. Everybody wants power. They hold power. Uh, they're more interested in winning elections. Do you know why we, we, we respect what Ntate Mutsepe has come in to do at CAF? We respect that Dr. Mutsipe has had two years. Dr. Mutsipe has had two years in charge of CAF or in the upper hierarchy as president. Two years. And we've seen strides in the women's game. We've seen strides in the, in, 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 you know, we had the AFL stuff. We've seen strides in the general running of the, 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 of CAF. We've seen strides in uh, the commercial viability of CAF, the, the types of profits that they made from AFCON, the types of strategies they used in AFCON. And, and I'm thankful to Tate Mutsipe for coming in and doing those things. But can we be honest? Those are not difficult things to do. They're not meant to be as difficult as we make it sound. And we keep hiding behind uh, the continent. We keep hiding behind money, lack of resources and all of that stuff. We keep hiding behind it. So what did Ntate Mutsipe do? 
Kef was still in the same place. He managed to go out and get sponsors. They managed to go out and rejig the budget. Are those things hard to do? Or are we just fooling ourselves into thinking that the rest of the world has it all together? The rest of the world uh, is doing so much more. We're fooling ourselves that in Africa we can't ask for too much. We've had conversations about the PSL. Here, where people have told me that the PSL, founded in 96, a 28-year-old organization, is still figuring it out. You know, they're still, they're still trying to find their way. There'll come a time when things are done. Meanwhile, this is the same PSL that was so innovative in the beginning. They were so innovative. What about Ivan because are flying to England to go sit down with Manchester United's lawyers and English Prem people to figure out how to do a broadcast deal. To figure out how to take this league leaps and bounds around many around the continent. Yet we sit here now and we don't see the same type of innovation. We don't see the same type of structural reinforcement or sometimes even building new structures in order to make sure that this thing is viable. And it's not for lack of resources. It's lack of proper leadership and lack of proper, uh, 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 a lack of that commit, like I said, the commitment to make things better. We even lack just taking some funds now and maybe taking a loss today in order to build tomorrow. You know, I looked at uh, uh, the, the, the UEFA financials. I read them in, in trying to wrap my head around this. I looked at the financials. Do you know that more often than not, for tournaments that are not the UEFA Champions League or the Euros, the, the men's Euros, those guys are going into negatives. And this is spending on media, this is spending on the tournaments, this is spending on everything that they put into it. They're usually going into the negatives. They don't reap the return. You think the Conference League is making money for them. But they understand that in five years' time, that Conference League is going to look like a completely different beast. It's going to benefit so many teams within that uh, European ecosystem. They understand that if we start implementing these tournaments now and maybe making a loss and maybe looking stupid or dumb, maybe taking extra money and trying to give it to the different teams and doing all of those things is only going to benefit us later on. The reason why Dr. Mutsipe could turn around CAF in two years is because these things are not rocket science problems. But it took somebody who, for in all intents and purposes, functions outside of football. I know he's owned Mamelu Sundowns for a while. I know he's been in and about. But it took somebody to come in and say, Mara, guys, why are you guys sitting down? Why aren't we looking at different things? Okay. How do we do a women's champion? How do we do a women's uh, CAF Champions League? You know what? Instead of adding the cost of everybody flying around, let's host it in Ivory Coast. Bring everybody in. Now we've got a solution. We've done the first one. We can expand going from there. Hey guys, you know, the Champions League, everybody complains about the same thing. The travel costs are too much for the smaller teams. How about we group them? If you look at the rest of football, UEFA, FIFA, and all those guys, 
they're relatively, they, they, they're so good at coming up with new things, trying them. Okay, it fails, we move on to the next thing. Now, if FIFA series. You know, let's take all of these countries, bring them into one place, and let's make it a, a festival. South Africa played Algeria, they played Andorra, you know, all in, uh, in Algeria. There were other games happening. I, I, I want the innovation. I'm tired of the excuses. I'm tired of feeling sorry for African football. There's so many things that we can solve. Simple things. But we're waiting for a savior like Mutsepe. We're waiting for our, leaders, our leadership within football to wake up one day and remember why we're doing all of this stuff. And these things that we're doing, honestly, it's not, it's not charity. The things that I'm asking for is not charity. I often speak here about the softer side of football, the media side. You should see how much money UEFA spends on media. But anyway, the softer side. One of the master strokes of AFCON this year was to go, let's try to get AFCON into as many homes as we can get it in. You should expand that. Let's try and get CAF created media into everywhere as part of our deals with, with a super sport or a Canal Plus or a New World TV. Part of it is that you're going to, or an SABC, part of that deal is that you're going to have to take some of our created media that highlights the good things that are happening, that reminds us of things that have happened, the, the, the PR stuff. You're going to have to take that stuff and implement it within each of the countries. Do you know why? Tomorrow, you will wake up with an audience. Tomorrow, you will wake up with eyes that you can go sell and get sponsorship. I say this here all the time. There's a reason why uh, Channel 203 on Supersport, they are committed to reminding you. No, this, is, this was a great player. That guy was a great player. No, this guy was this. No, let's stoke some this. What's a fantasy football show? We're going to have a fantasy league show where we're going to speak about it with, because we've got our fantasy or whatever. We're going to have a show about it. Then we're going to have Raiti and Mang Mang. Then we're going to have Gold Box. We're going we're gonna to do all of these things so that me and you get almost propagandized into tying ourselves to, to, to England. And then England turns around to their sponsors and says, hey man, look. Look at all the eyes we have. This is how much we're charging now. It's now something that you're going to want to come in and do. I've spoken about the PSL. You're telling me half of the teams can't have a TikTok account? An active TikTok account? You're telling me that the teams in the PSL could not do this? This. Yet they're going to cry later on about fan bases. And the sad part is that the best example of slacking, resting on your laurels, just so happens to come from Europe. Ligue 1, Ligue, Ligue 1 in, French is, in France is struggling to get a broadcast deal. They had so much politique and behind the scenes things that happened that literally... They're going into, they're about, what, two months away from starting their league. They don't have a broadcast deal. They're scrambling right now. I'm thankful for Ntate Mozepo for stepping in. Very thankful because he changed everything of how we even view CAF. But can that be adopted across the continent? And more importantly... Can we stop babying them? No, they're trying, guys. 67 years. In Tangazako, 70-year-old UEFA. I'm going to use them as the example. They just revamped their Champions League. There was a threat of a Super League and they went, you? 
let's change. Let's let's bring in 40 teams and figure out how we can get more games out of it and squeeze a little bit more out of it so we can get more we can get more 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 euros in uh, in order to keep these teams happy. They're iterating. Meanwhile, our Champions League has been 16 teams for how long? With the same teams finishing with the same complaints. To play a preliminary game in the CAF, CAF uh, Champions League, to qualify for the CAF Champions League when you're playing prelim games, you don't get anything for that time. Which means that there are teams that come from small, small leagues that have done very well, that have put themselves in a situation to then go and go and play in the Champions League and eye the money. But you run at a risk, for example. When do we get travel sponsors? You run the risk. You'll pay for all of those things. You'll there are teams that drive 24 hours to go play games. Because they can't afford flights. They can't afford to do all those things. At what point do we, as Africans, and not even with the knowledge of the world, at what point do we as Africans say, we need to start making our football, go innovating in our football, making it better, making sure that our players are not leaving to go seek a better standard overseas, to make sure that our coaches are not leaving because there's no point in staying here. Or even just questions. Sometimes I feel like we're so afraid to even ask the questions that need to be asked. We're afraid to put pressure on these organizations. And it's not a hate. Constructive criticism is great. That's how you grow. But we're so tied to this idea that, oh, it's Africa. Oh, we're struggling. Oh, there's no resources. Oh, there's no this, there's no that. We're so tied to it. That identity. I asked the question the other time when we were speaking about us versus everybody else. And I'm like, is there a situation where we can create African structures and have African teams that are going to be able to stand up uh, to those teams overseas with African play? With our own skills and things that we have honed all the way down that they can't do. Oh, we're going to sit back and say, no, you know, they need to go to Europe and they need to go be, you know, uh, uh, exposed to better structures and all of that stuff. Come on, guys. And I still say the biggest example of what I'm talking about and the biggest show that this is not to do with all of that and it's not as hard as we make it out to be is Ntate Two years. We've seen AFLs, we've seen the WEFCON become better covered, we've seen FCON better covered, we've seen uh, all types of growth. All of this could have been done. But we're waiting for a savior instead of looking at ourselves and saying, okay, we need to roll up our sleeves. We need to make this better for ourselves. Those guys that are holding seats and power. Bo Isa Hayato, I didn't know Isa Hayato was president for 29 years. Bo Isa Hayato, Bo Tani Chodan, all of those people. I don't think they're going to change anytime soon. So we need to start facilitating those changes. We need to start asking questions. We need to start forcing things through. Because they are not.